Hey, Dad, tell us your bear story. Well, I'm not too sure what sparked the memory. It could have been on our way up to this beautiful lake to go camping. I had seen a small dead bear on the road. But many things rekindle this old story from about 2004 or 2005. We had planned a small trip on part of the Pacific Crest Trail. I had started the Pacific Crest Trail 1995 when it was brand new and slowly gone through piece after piece. This part was out of uh, in Northern California. I can't remember the name of the campground, but we went up over Soldier Pass on our way to Chicken Spring Lake. We were gonna spend the night there and then proceed to the backside of Mount Whitney. Half the people bowed out of the trip, which is normal on any lengthy backpack trip. So the trip ended up being me and a friend of mine, Greg, known as We had a nice start. We got up to where we were camping. You couldn't go all the way to Chicken Spring Lake because it was always too full of people. So we stopped at a um, campground before that. I'd spent time there before. We got there early in the afternoon between 2 and 2.30 and proceeded to attempt to start up, set up camp. I had set up my camp, but Greg was trying a new system. He wanted to suspend his backpack in between two trees. Instead of bringing a bear canister, which was required by law. To compensate for not bringing a bear canister, Greg decided to bring a 44 Magnum pistol with at least six rounds, maybe more, I don't know. So he spent the afternoon trying to figure a way to suspend his pack between two trees. I had suspected this wasn't gonna work because he was using parachute cord and the trees were 50 to 60 feet apart. The nature of parachute cord is to give. So no matter how hard he tried to hang his pack, it still almost sank to the ground. This is noteworthy because his wife would always pack an ample supply of food for him she would plan his meals, and I believe this particular trip included a full glass bottle of brandy. A little heavy for a backpack trip, but Greg was a strong man. He could handle that. After four hours of trying to suspend his pack, I could see he was becoming frustrated, so I suggested to him that maybe where we were camped would be a better place for him to hang his pack. There was this tree, an old tree, with uh, the trunk had a diameter of probably seven or eight feet. And I thought, Greg, if you hung your pack on the other side of the tree, it would be safe no matter <clears throat> what odors the bear picked up. And I'm sure the bear would pick up odors because instead of using a airtight bear canister, Greg had all his food in a net bag. So 
I could smell the food, so I figured the bear might also. So Greg decided, after I had gone to bed, because I'd eaten it at normal time, Greg decided to hang his food in the tree. Now, I had suggested the far side of the tree, but Greg decided to hang his food about 10 feet from where my tent was. <laughs> I was unaware of this. So everybody went to bed. I in my tent, Greg in his tent, which was of course far away from where he hung his food. And about two o'clock in the morning, Greg starts yelling to me. He said, I think there's a bear getting my food. And I listened for a while, and I said, Greg, to me, it's, it just sounds like a raccoon or something. It's not that much noise. Because I'm thinking, his food's on the other side of this gigantic tree. But Greg insists. He says, no, I think it's a bear. So Greg comes out of his tent, and he comes behind my tent, and he says, he shines his flashlight up in this tree. He says, look, it's a bear. And true enough, there was a bear up in the tree trying to retrieve Greg's food from about 10 or 15 feet from where my tent was. So I said, well, Greg, I didn't know you hung your food on this side. He says, yes, well, it was more convenient for me. And he says, um, we got to get rid of the bear. And I'm going, well, I think I would leave the bear alone. Now Greg has, ha, is standing behind my tent, using me as a shield, and he's picking rocks up off the ground and he's throwing them at the bear. So he does this a few times and the bear becomes upset and he's shining the light on it and I'm watching this bear go from this limb to the trunk and he climbs down the trunk of a seven or eight foot in diameter tree as if he's on a ladder. Just clank, 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 comes right down and then he looks at me and he looks at Greg, and Greg continues to throw rocks at the bear, upsetting the bear. So the bear looks at my tent and heads towards me, going from zero to 60 miles an hour in about one second. <laughs> so while I'm thinking about bending over and kissing my ass goodbye, the bear lurches at full speed, jumps over my tent, and goes after Greg, which was a good thing because Greg was the one tormenting the bear. Greg, in the meantime, runs over to his tent to retrieve his 44 Magnum pistol, which he brought instead of a bear canister. And the bear nails Greg with a slight brush. The brush went from the top of Greg's right shoulder all the way down to his wrist. The bear must have had a hangnail because it left one beautiful line opening up everything about one sixteenth of an inch deep down to his wrist. And then the bear continues on a loop around back to the tree. In the meantime, Greg thinks it's a good idea to get his 44 Magnum loaded. So he does that. The bear goes back to his spoils from the tree, which is Greg's improperly maintained pack. And starts to consume Greg's meals. Greg thinks it's okay now to confront the bear, 
So he approaches the bear from his tent and fires his gun at him. The bear reacts and charges Greg. Greg file, fires his 44 Magnum point blank range until he empties all chambers, six rounds. Finally, on the sixth round, it startled the bear and the bear raises and backs off and goes away. The bear had retrieved all the goodies from Greg's pack and is now sitting about a hundred yards away. So I told Greg, I'm leaving, we should go. Bears are known to come back after they've eaten looking for more. So we left at 2.30, 2.45 in the morning. We hiked all the way down Soldier Pass, back to where we had parked. And that was the end of the trip. And I've never spoken to Greg since then. <laughs>